Hey guys, it's Bully from Bully's Painting Parlour and we are here getting ready for lesson three, part two. And also I'm gonna roll straight into lesson four afterwards as I'm gonna be doing a bit of painting as it's all out. So the first thing I wanna cover off is um, setup. So I always set up in the kitchen. I set up in the kitchen because um, it, it's the right place for one of my greatest life hacks, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, secondly, there is an inbuilt extractor hob underneath um, the the cooker hood you've got spotlights coming down from the cooker hood you're on I'm on a ceramic um, worktop which is nice and flat so I can cover it all off and mask it all off and it just gives me an ideal location to work away from the kids speaking of kids uh, my four-year-old and five-year-old are at home today if you hear screaming and giggling and stuff in the background sorry but I can't do anything to avoid that and also if you hear barking dogs that's life of being an amateur video maker thing so what we're going to do now is cover off the setup. So I'm just going to walk you around the kitchen. So first off, you can see here that I've just put some greaseproof paper down and a turntable. The turntable is purely for you. I don't normally use a turntable. I normally go kind of rough and ready. I've got an Infinity, which I'll be using today from Harder and Steenbeck. Um, a stand, airbrush dinner, the model ready to be painted, surface primer and some model air white and a brush to mix it all with. And then, although I normally advocate it being on the floor so I can show you the pressures and stuff, I have put the compressor up on the side and just mask and taped its foot down. Um, and then the final life hack over here in the kitchen sink is a bowl of warm soapy water. And what I show you with, to do with that later will blow your minds. Okay, so let's just put the, uh, the camera back on. Okay, so uh, yesterday we covered off mixing paint um, and the right consistencies of paint. So um, hopefully I can do most of this on camera and I don't need this here in the first place. Um, we're going to just put some surface primer down. So this is uh, Vallejo Airbrush Surface Primer. Now most of the Vallejo stuff is supposed to be airbrush ready. Um, in fact lots of people do airbrush ready um, ranges. I would strongly suggest that you still dilute any airbrush ready paints. Because you know just a little bit of thinner in there helps the viscosity and it helps the airbrush to work properly. So I'm just gonna use the soapy water I've got just to brush my mixing brush away. And we've now got, I showed you the right consistency yesterday, so the right consistency is in there. Here we see the air hose with the quick connector bullet on. And in order to not complicate you, I'm opening the air pressure out on my, on my uh, micro adjust to maximum. And I'm gonna adjust it manually the old fashioned way using the compressor, just like you'll do if you don't have a micro adjust. So I'm gonna snap in the connector for the airbrush. Um, and then I'm gonna turn the compressor on. So the noise is gonna get a little bit louder, but I don't actually think it's that loud at all. Let's just put this down here for a second. So, this is a great way to start. So we can see that the airbrush's uh, compressor pressure is at like 36 PSI, which is too high. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna vent it a little bit and we're gonna drop it down. So we're gonna just give it a little bit of a turn and I'm just gonna use the uh, moisture trap just to vent it down. Okay, and let's just do that again. Okay, cracking. So I'm now at kind of 24-ish PSI, and that's about what I want to be using for priming. Hopefully I can get this back in place. Sorry if it's a bit jerky and I'm making you feel a bit seasick. There we go. Okay, so talking off the actions of an airbrush again, um, we discussed previously that you press down to release air, and you can hear that coming out now and we pull back to release paint. And you'll start to see if I pull back, some paint coming out. And this is an ideal demonstration because it's not quite right. So the surface primers are a bit thicker. So what we do is we are drawing and spraying, hopefully I can pop it here. We're gonna spray onto our hand. And you can see that that's not an entirely even coat. You got some spattering or some powdering on the outside. Um, and the thicker the paint, the higher the pressure. So I'm just gonna turn my pressure up a little bit uh, because in true fashion, it had dropped down to 19 
Um, so let's try again. And this is actually at 23, and there you'll see a marked difference. Hopefully I can see that on the camera too. Oh, hang on. Focus. You see a marked difference in terms of how smooth the second circle is. So we now know that we are ready to airbrush with this. Um, so just some basic airbrush, I'm going to put this cap on because I'll be waving the airbrush around as well and I don't want to be spilling paint. So just some basics of an airbrush. Um, obviously if you're pulling back, the further away you are, you're going to get a wide coverage. The closer you are, you're going to get a solid coverage. The more you pull the trigger back, the more paint will come out. It's possible to do really fine and interesting stuff and you can get even finer than that. This is a, a surface primer on high pressure. If I wanted it finer, I would drop the pressure down and thin the paint right out. So um, what I'm going to do now is taking Gorefang, I'm just going to start to put some primer on it. And we don't want to be using long drawn out sp um, sprays because that's going to cause tip dry. So what we want to do is just some nice sort of even light, just picking out the, the model. We're just going to go over it a few times in light. Now, so I'm using an Infinity today because I'm going to be doing some more advanced stuff on Gorefang this afternoon um, and therefore the needle on this one is a 0.15 it's as fine as it can get uh, so it would be a bit easier for somebody using an, uh, um, an Evolution or an Ultra to um, surface prime because those airbrushes have got slightly larger needles at 0.2 and obviously a larger needle means you get more coverage but I want to control the paint I'm going to be using later and there's no point in having three or four airbrushes out not for doing a single job. So you can see I'm just blacking this in and it's super easy to get a lovely even coat. Just to be helpful for this painting demonstration, the bit I'm painting now is the top of Gorfang's head. So I've had to, because of the way it, it um, pins into the body, I'm going to have to paint it upside down, which is always going to be a bit of a challenge. I'll have to be holding it like this when I paint it later. Okay, so let's just turn the compressor off. And let's come in for a focus. 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 Not going to do that. Let's try and bring it into the light a bit. Okay, so wow shakes, too much wine last night. Okay, so we've got a nice even coat of black or surface primer black all over the model. Um, now you can use your airbrush actually to speed up the drying process if you want to, um, just by blatting a bit of straightforward air onto it with no paint. Obviously spray it first on the side to make sure there's no paint coming out and then you can just quickly run the airbrush Oh, I'll turn my compressor off. You can just quickly run the airbrush over the model to dry it all out. Okay, so now I am going to talk you through how to clean and change between paints. And this is going to be quite groundbreaking for a number of you. One of the biggest problems with airbrushing is the amount of time it takes to change colours and how much of a faff cleaning is. So by changing from black to white, I'm doing the ultimate extreme, and this should therefore be the best possible demonstration for you. So, let's go low. Here we see the sink, and just check how long I've got on the timer left. Nine minutes, okay. So I'm gonna just take the cap off the airbrush, drop it in the, in the soapy water, I'm just going to chuck the paint in the soapy water, I'm going to immerse the, the airbrush and the cup only, and I'm going to spray. And while I spray, I'm going to move. I'm going to leave some water in the paint cup, and I'm going to pull it out, I'm going to close the nozzle off of my fingers, and I'm going to back flush it, washing out the last of the, the, last of the, the colour from inside. I'm just going to use my kitchen tap, Going to run a tiny bit of water through it, back flush it. I'm going to flick it to get all that water off it. And then just a straightforward piece of kitchen towel. And all I'm going to do now is 
just dry the airbrush down because I don't want any loose water hanging around in there. Flick it out a little bit more. And there we can see a completely clean airbrush. That is how you change colours when you are airbrushing between colours without taking four or five hours to do it. You just regularly change this warm soapy water, Bob's your uncle. Okay, so I am going to turn my compressor off. I'm going to take the quick release off the airbrush. I'm going to hang it up on one of the kitchen unit tops on one of the handles. And I'm going to end this lesson right here because it's a perfect time at 10 minutes, 40 odd. So when I come back, we're going to start to show you pre-shading with the white. Okay.